Hi, I'm Kelly Snyder, business owner, mother, and board member for CAPSA. As a board member, I've had the privilege to witness the life-saving and life-changing work CAPSA's caseworkers, therapists, and advocates provide each year to more than 1,500 individuals in our community, and I've heard survivors share how CAPSA saved their lives and supported them on their path of hope and healing. CAPSA is a nonprofit victim support center serving cash and rich counties. Our mission is to provide safe, caring, and confidential shelter, advocacy, and support for victims of domestic violence and sexual assault, and to prevent and reduce incidents of abuse through education. This work is critical as domestic violence and sexual abuse are far more pervasive than most realize. In Utah, one in three women and one in seven men will experience interpersonal violence in their lifetime. Think about these numbers, one in three women and one in seven men. This trauma also impacts family members, friends, neighbors, and coworkers. We seldom know when people experience abuse because this trauma is often stigmatized with shame and perpetrated behind closed doors. This is why CAPS's support is so critical. Victims of abuse often come to CAPSA lost and alone. CAPSA helps them discover their first step toward their path of hope and healing. For many survivors, their first step begins when they call CAPSA's support phone line. CAPSA's support phone line operates 24 hours a day and 365 days a year. When you call CAPSA at 753-2500, it is answered by a trauma-informed employee who provides immediate support and connects you to a caseworker for personalized advocacy. This phone line also supports our local law enforcement, whose protocol when responding to a high-risk domestic violence home is to call CAPSA for support and directly connect the victim to speak with CAPSA. Once they are linked to CAPSA, the advocate will immediately begin safety planning with the victim and if unsafe, offer refuge in our emergency shelter. Domestic violence is complicated and often dangerous. Domestic violence is the leading cause of injury to women and the single largest cause for homicides in Utah. For an individual or family fleeing domestic violence, they often have nowhere safe to go. CAPS's emergency shelter provides a safe place to pause, take a breath, and have the peace to plan their next steps. CAPS's shelter is a 32-bed emergency shelter for survivors of domestic violence and sexual abuse. On average, CAPSA shelters more than 300 women, men, and accompanied children with individuals staying up to one month. While in shelter, residents meet with a caseworker daily to build and complete an action plan, which includes securing housing, jobs, registering children in new schools, and beginning legal or civil proceedings. We often hear from survivors that CAPSA's shelter was the first time they felt safe in years. A recent survivor stated, I just want the CAPSA peace to continue when I'm out on my own. CAPSA's shelter is the first zero turnaway shelter in Utah. As CAPSA's board of directors, we have pledged to always ensure CAPSA will provide emergency shelter for local victims of domestic violence and sexual abuse because CAPSA will always be a safe place. Each path for a survivor is unique. The role of CAPSA's caseworkers is to meet the individual or family on their path and walk with them, showing them options and supporting and encouraging them to safety. Casework is focused on ensuring safety, confidentiality, and removing tangible barriers that may cause someone to return to an abusive relationship. CAPSA's caseworkers encourage self-determination and help survivors build plans based on their goals. This includes building safety plans, completing protective orders, attending court, advocating with law enforcement, navigating cultural barriers, identifying and securing resources, and making connections to other services and agencies. A common concern among victims of abuse is a lack of control. For example, when a rape survivor reports to law enforcement, it triggers an investigation, and this investigation is outside of the victim's control. Because CAPS's caseworkers are confidential, community-based advocates, survivors can tell their whole story. Caseworkers will talk through potential outcomes, allowing the victim to self-determine the next steps. Having a safe place without judgment to share one's story increases positive outcomes, including increased participation in the criminal justice system. Domestic violence is the number one contributor to homelessness for women and mothers and their children. CAPS's emergency shelter is critical in diverting homelessness. 
However, to successfully prevent homelessness, it requires helping individuals and families find safe and stable homes. CAPS's housing program is among the best in the state of Utah and is a national model for transitional housing programs. It is available to clients for up to two years and incorporates housing subsidies with advocacy and educational support. CAPS's housing program supports more than 200 individuals throughout our community. Many victims of domestic violence don't qualify for traditional housing because of inadequate work history or poor credit. CAPSA also owns and manages 21 homes. These homes are part of CAPSA's transitional housing program and incorporate the same housing subsidies, advocacy, and education for families for up to two years. Independence Place, completed in 2016, is the first of its kind in Utah. This neighborhood for survivors of domestic violence features nine beautiful single-family homes, a community park, and shared gardens. In 2020, a donor gifted a fourplex for CAPSA's exclusive use, and in 2021, CAPSA completed our second neighborhood called Independence Way, which includes five single-family homes and a triplex. CAPSA's housing program goes beyond just providing a home, but works toward economic sustainability with each family. I remember hearing a story of a client asking her caseworker for help with budgeting. The caseworker went to her home and asked to see her bills. This survivor pointed to a corner of the room with fear in her eyes where there was a stack of unopened bills. For this survivor, she had never had access to money, paid bills, or worked with a budget. The caseworker helped her build a plan to contact and pay past due accounts and build a budget moving forward. This is advocacy and an example of the support survivors receive in CAPS's housing program. For many survivors who must pass over a mountain of obstacles, a safe home is like reaching their largest peak. CAPSA programs are designed to support all victims of abuse. This extends to children who witnessed the abuse and or experienced their own trauma. CAPSA's Children's Center provides trauma-informed childcare while parents meet with their caseworker or therapist. The Children's Center staff partner with the parent and family's caseworker and therapist to support their treatment plans. This often includes teaching emotion regulation and implementing empowering life skills. CAPSA also employs youth advocates to support the children living in shelter and in CAPSA's transitional housing. These children's programs are designed to break the cycle of abuse and help children find their own healthy path. On the path to healing, many need extra guidance to address the trauma. Often victims of domestic violence and or sexual abuse can experience PTSD, disassociation, anxiety, and depression. CAPSA provides free clinical therapy for individuals who have experienced trauma from abuse, whether they're currently experiencing the abuse or it happened years ago. Like all of CAPSA's services, CAPSA's clinical therapy is free. CAPSA does not charge for therapy and has chosen not to bill insurance or even require any co-pays because if someone must choose between feeding their child or making a $30 co-payment, therapy will not be accessible. One client shared how after being sexually assaulted, going back to USU triggered debilitating anxiety because of the crowds and close proximity to male students. By working with a CAPSA therapist, this student was able to identify her triggers and learn centering and grounding techniques, helping her reduce her panic. She was able to stay in class, and a year and a half later, she graduated. CAPSA also works to prevent abuse through community education and awareness. Educators work in middle and high schools, as well as community groups, to promote healthy relationships, reduce risk factors, increase protective factors, and bring awareness to CAPSA's services. As CAPSA is working in the schools, they can support students who are struggling. For example, after a presentation on bullying in a local middle school, a young girl approached our educator. She shared her experience of being bullied for several years and explained that she had been contemplating suicide. CAPSA was able to connect her with school support and she later received additional CAPSA services, including therapy. CAPSA also provides education to local businesses to increase awareness of signs of domestic violence and other trauma and how to support employees. Community education plays an important role in CAPSA's mission to prevent and reduce instances of abuse in our community. As a CAPSA board member, it has been my honor to share more about CAPSA and the services CAPSA offers. 
Although this is only a glimpse at the breadth of services, I hope you can see how CAPSA supports victims of domestic violence and sexual assault, and you feel confident in encouraging a friend or loved one to contact CAPSA. Finally, I would also challenge you to increase your support for CAPSA. CAPSA is only able to support more than 1,500 individuals each year with free shelter, casework, and therapy because of donations and financial support from our community. When you support CAPSA, you are supporting hope. Thank you for taking this time to learn about CAPSA. You can learn more and donate at capsa.org.